heat damage, heat training, chemical damage, relaxers, color. Everybody's so scared of everything. But as a licensed cosmetologist, I understand that if you do things properly, all the forms of damage can be avoided. And in this video, we're going to talk about it while you get some visual eye candy okay so let's get into it before we get started make sure you go ahead and subscribe here to my channel if you have not done so already give this video a thumbs up and click on that bell notification so you're notified every time i post another video now this beauty here in my chair you know sat in my chair quite a few times and this day in particular she was ready to cut her hair off completely and get a bob right she wanted to get a bob which we did end up doing video coming soon but first let's talk about this video sponsors me simple apothecary this is our shaga mushroom latte and you need to click the links in the description box so you can learn more about it because i have a full video on shaga mushrooms but let's get into this color formation now there are three bonds holding your hair together and right now we're dealing with the disulfide bond and there are also three layers of your hair shaft and right now what we're dealing with is the cortex. The cortex of the hair shaft is where the melanin lives and it is also where the disulfide bond lives. So the cortex is the layer of the hair shaft that's going to control how curly your hair is, how many softer to softer linkages aka disulfide bonds or how much melanin you have in your hair and right now what i am doing is using lightener to pull out that melanin now what you just watched me do was formulate my color before i added olaplex in right before i added olaplex one i was about to say olaplex zero before i added olaplex one in i mixed the color now when you are in cosmetology school, this module, this part of school is the most complicated portion, hair color, because it is not as simple as putting hair color on hair, right? So what I am doing right now is giving her four dimensional color. What I mean by four dimensional, there will be four different shades, technically five, including her natural hair color, because some of her natural tones will be left in as well so i'm going in some pieces have lightener on them some have a and the other three colors are all a high lift color and then at the end i'm gonna come back in and tone her hair right but again you guys this is the thing that i went to cosmetology school for when i was in cosmetology school there was no uh twist outs there was no wash and go there was no team natural this is what hair was about hair was about the bonds it was about coloring it was about being able to remove pigment it was about you know setting the color back to the place that you want it to be toning it was literally an art form so for me when you think about um an artist right somebody that is a painter somebody that paints for a living this is literally the same thing for me but instead of it uh the uh, canvas being my workstation somebody's hair is the same way a chef for most chefs that I know personally cooking is an art form in the kitchen right and the plate is the place that they show their art well it was the same thing for me but hair right so what you're gonna see on the screen pop up is certain people within the seven day challenge or people that are here on the channel who have just followed Followed the simple things that I tell you guys and they're noticing sebum production you guys I'm telling you the oils and the butters that you're constantly adding to the hair all of the products that you're constantly layering on the hair shaft those are the things that are causing your follicle inflammation those are the things that is causing scalp inflammation this is why when you go to a dermatologist they tell you to stop putting anything on your scalp and the only thing that belongs there is shampoo because when you put other things on there you turn off or you turn up your skin cell turnover cycle this is somebody again within this challenge who's like hey 
are y'all noticing skin cell turnover people have never noticed it before and also have never noticed the sebum coming out of their scalp and when they do notice the sebum coming out of their scalp they notice that it is of a different consistency it's not an oil it's like a waxy substance that you would never feel if you have your hair covered in product all right so again this beauty here that is sitting in my chair her hair has been grown not from her wearing it wet not from her doing wash and goes not from her doing twist outs this beauty washes well shampoos i'm sorry shampoos and conditions her hair like normal and blow dries her hair and then she may put it in two french braids just minding a business or she may put it in one ponytail but that ponytail is braided down and she leaves her hair alone she keeps her scalp clean and her ends trimmed she gets a trim every eight to ten weeks right and so for everybody who thinks that if you get a trim every eight to ten weeks your hair won't grow can we please explain why her hair still grows and she gets a trim every eight to ten weeks right and i also want you to note that she has siblings right and some of her siblings have hair like her but the majority of them don't because they follow team natural practices and they do all of these other things and over the years their hair has constantly broke off but she constantly retains the length right so now her hair is done processing now what we are doing is getting rid of all of the color it is imperative that i rinse out her hair in cold water so the colors do not bleed again you guys this this is the most that I can do when it comes to color um, as it pertains to teaching it here on my channel I'm not going to get on YouTube and start teaching different chemical services you know why the very first time that I was taught how to do this I messed it up and the second time and the third time and the fourth time and the fifth time and the sixth time I messed it up and it wasn't until I was in cosmetology school for a while where I got to make the same mistakes over and over again on a mannequin, not on a human being, on a mannequin that I was able to pass that module and get out on the floor. And then even once I was on the floor, I still made mistakes. I was in cosmetology school for two years, guys. So... I feel like the reason that most people are in the place that they're in with their hair, by the way, I am using Olaplex 4. The very first thing that I did was simply, simply, simply just removing the color. It is imperative that you take your time and really saturate the hair with water. And this is even if you're not rinsing color out. When I was standing behind the chair, one of the main reasons that I had a five minute grace period, you guys, is because my shampoos were life. And I cannot deal with you taking 15 minutes because it'll take me about 15, 20 minutes just to shampoo your hair. Yeah, that's how important the shampoo was to me right so now that her hair is colored um and now that the color has been rinsed out her hair has not been combed out since the foils were taken out however her hair was properly detangled before the foils were put in so her hair is not matted and detangled her curl pattern has not been changed but you will see it stretch the curls look a little stretch right so now at this point I am using Kimbra's leave-in condition. Well, no, I'm using my own product line. But if you want to know what leave-in conditioner you can use, my favorite is Kimbra. And I'll leave it in the description box or it may be in the lower right-hand corner. Just click on products and then boom, in the description box, right? But went ahead and began round brushing her hair. Now, I am extremely gentle on her hair. I need you to use YouTube and zoom in on this round brush. And you will see that there is no hair within my round brush. Another thing that I want you to do is go to my other videos, right? The other videos that I've reposted. Because remember, this video is about four to five years old, okay? So I need you guys to go to the other videos that I have of people with shorter hair than hers. Any length, any texture, you will notice I blow dry hair the exact same way. I am using the exact same blow dryer. I am using the exact same blow uh, brown brush. 
I'm not using a different round brush because her hair is a different length. I am not rotating my round brush any differently than I do it on short hair because her hair is longer. The techniques and the science stays the same. It is not this over complication that we now have to have with hair depending on length depending on texture it doesn't work like that guys in the salon as a licensed cosmetologist my skill and my techniques are not changing based on length my my techniques are not changing based on your curl pattern that is why i'm so against the curl typing chart because it holds no value whatsoever. A licensed cosmetologist cannot use it in any way. Let me know in the comments if you notice any of the dimension that she has. I'm speeding this video up. I am not combing her hair hard, you guys. I know what I'm doing. I have been doing this for a very long time. Her hair is not damaged in any way, shape, or form. But again, I want you guys to remember that this initial video was about two hours long. And so you're getting it like sped up. Her hair is not damaged, tangled, matted in any way, shape, or form. Again, a video is being sped up. And I am combing the leave-in conditioner through from her ends up to her roots. There is a difference between combing and detangling. When you detangle the hair, you are removing knots and tangles. When you comb the hair, you are combing the hair. You are taking the comb throughout the hair and you are distributing product, all right? Her hair is high porosity like mine, so it does dry super duper duper fast. So you just watch me go ahead and spray on just a little additional like witness right just so I can actually set the bond because every to each his own whatever a hairstylist want to do is what a hairstylist want to do but if I'm setting the hydrogen bond and if the hydrogen bond is already set once the hair is dry why would I blow dry on dry hair it makes no sense the bond is already set I'm only blow drying to set the bond it don't make sense okay so yeah that is what I'm doing every time every time I comb through her hair because her hair is long and if I try to detangle as I blow dry her hair it is going to actually break it off but as you can see I did not and I am able to get through her hair with ease um I know that a lot of people will I've seen so many people say that they go to cosmetologists or hairstylists that are like, oh my God, your hair is so long or they see your hair and they'll try to thin your hair out because they say it's too thick and they try to listen. Y'all are going to dusty cosmetologists, all right? Dusty cosmetologists. And in a video coming really soon, I'm going to show you guys how to find good ones. But y'all, when I tell you women, and I hope nobody takes offense to this, but when I saw women with extremely damaged hair that I had to like create miracles on it irritated my soul so women who had hair like hers or the thicker your hair is even if it was damaged even if your hair was really damaged the thicker your hair is and the longer it is the more excited it made me because I can do damage with a round brush damage with a round brush baby baby and round brushes in my opinion I learned how to use a round brush on long hair so I had to master using a round brush on shorter hair but round brushes are actually pretty simplistic to use on longer hair so at this point um we are doing her full silk out all right i just want you guys to get oh a peek a pickable at this color right because we did like some caramel like i wanted to have her looking like a twix right so imagine like the darker colors are the caramel pieces and then the lighter pieces are like the the cookie that's in the twix right and then you probably don't really notice but a little bit of her natural hair color is is there now anytime you color hair it is imperative that you go in and trim the ends that's with any chemical service even after um uh sewing it right anything that puts tension on the hair shaft or anything that changes it in any way shape or form it's really important that you go ahead and do a trim and as you can see i am not taking a bunch of length or weight off of her hair i am just making sure that even if she got the smallest minute break 
that it's not going to split up the hair shaft, right? And she understands that, which is why she still has all this hair on her head because she will trim her hair in a minute. And she knows that all she has to do is keep her scalp clean and clear and it will grow back again. Let me know in the in the comments if whether or not you want to see the full video where I cut all of her hair off and give her a bob by her request, right? Because again, she didn't even really the color she wanted to do the color but it was my idea originally she was like let's cut it off today let's do a bob I was like lord please no will you let me color it first since you already want to cut it off right so yeah that is how we ended up here but again if you are scared of combs and brushes if you are scared of flat irons if you're scared of color it's it's you will just constantly be in this realm of not being able to get your hair to do what it wants to do because the women on this planet with some of the longest, most beautiful hair, they put chemicals and color in their hair all the time. They blow dry and flat on their hair all the time. They are not scared of combs and brushes. They do not have wash days that take them six or seven hours. You guys, that's not normal. And this is coming from a person who would do 13 people in one day, five days a week, you guys. Like, it's not that deep. So when I posted this video originally, people were really booty hurt about me combing these curls out. Well, that was not our plan. Our plan was never to um, leave curls in her hair. If she would have wanted that, then that's what we would have did. But um, I was just creating like body waves. I wasn't creating curls. I was creating body waves. But I mean, it does look really beautiful, especially with the dimension of her color. You can really see um, the dimension with her colors when I curl it. But that wasn't what we were going for, mainly because I like to let my clients live in reality. And because she wasn't going anywhere and this wasn't for like a event or anything, I wanted her to have a style that she can keep up with and if I would have left the curls like this then she would have had to figure out how to turn them into body waves and all of that and she we wasn't doing that even though her hair is super long she does not play in her hair okay she keeps things very simplistic very calm so she like girl if I have to comb through it and I mean not comb through it but if I have to like try to style it and stuff mm -mm. other than flexi rides so I said okay babe so if all you want is something we can do with flexi rides I'm gonna just put these body waves in and then we are going to go ahead and comb them out so again stop being scared of combs y'all again when you are seeing me comb her hair through again it is because if your hair is not properly detangled from roots to ends, then anytime you go to detangle the hair, all is going, all that's gonna happen is the curls are either not gonna come out right, it's gonna look crunchy, and most of the time, that's why your silk presses don't come out silky, baby. If you're scared of combs and brushes, if you're scared to comb your hair properly, that is 100% the reason why your silk press is not coming out right. Because the purpose of a silk press is to separate every strand, every strand and silk it out. So if you're not combing the hair, what it, how are you going to get the proper silk press? When we are doing the chase method, it is not so the hair can get straight. It is to separate every strand as many strands as we can possibly get separated and even with the smallest tooth comb right the smallest right tail comb i still can't separate every strand the average person has anywhere between 100,000 and 400,000 strands so even as i'm combing through i'm still not separating every last one but we use the comb to glide it down so that way we are separating as many of them as possible and i'm not attacking the team natural community it's great that you guys came up with your lingo and stuff but we didn't call it the chase method it's not we didn't have a name for it in the shop we've been doing it since before i got a cosmetology license and we didn't have a name for it the ogs just passed it down like hey do it like this and then we followed suit and we changed up things 
in where we wanted them to be but I still color hair the same way that I was taught to color it in cosmetology school and that same tactic and technique that is taught on how to color hair in cosmetology school today in 2024 are techniques that were developed before my grandmother was born okay so these are things well before my mama's mama was born not my daddy's mama because it was around her era that they created it mm -hmm. but I really really want us to learn the science of hair and learn that even though the team natural has been around for a while hair is not some cookie cutter one two punch thing that you can just do you guys like when it comes to coloring the hair I can't just make a short 10 minute video and say hey mix this with this and put it on your hair like this and then it'll come out like this no you have to understand the core of the human body you have to understand the core of the hair shaft and then you can understand exactly how to color the hair because the thing is most people think you could just mix color up slap it in your hair and then keep going and a lot of people do and then say oh color broke my hair off it's not the fact that color broke your hair off it is that if you use any type of chemical whatsoever your maintenance practices have to be a one there's no just putting your hair in a ponytail for a month wearing your hair in a ponytail every day ponytails and braids and twists are placeholders something that should only be done for a very short period of time even if you have a, a a season of wearing hair extensions like i'm wearing hair extensions right now there is still a weekly practice that i follow to make sure that my scalp is clean and there's also practices that i follow before i put my extensions in to make sure that my hair stays strong Strong, healthy and intact and that it doesn't break through having hair extensions right and the same thing goes for hair color and that is why here on my channel I am always sharing the science with you so you can really understand hair and the way it was meant to be the way the hair industry was originally meant to be. You guys, hair was an art form for me when I was standing behind a chair. I got my cosmetology license when I was 19 years old. And was I 19? Yeah, was I 19 or 20? I was either 19 or 20. I don't know. I think I was 19. And then I retired from the hair industry at 28 because it had just completely turned upside down from what I wanted it to be or what I thought it was going to be originally because this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to do art, right? wanted to have a client come sit in my chair and say oh Zan, i want to create this and show me a picture and then i access their scalp and their hair and see if they're ready to do it if they were not ready for the color i would get their hair ready for it we would do treatments and different things to get their hair salve in a place where I was able to color it or we were able to do certain cuts, certain forms of extensions. All of the different things that you can do with your hair, there's certain methods and patterns that need to be followed. And the reason that so many people in the hair community in general are so confused is everybody wants to stray away from the science once COVID hit right and even before COVID once everything start going haywire everybody started saying okay I can do that too but I'm gonna skip all the steps that they took to get there because you don't need to go to school to do that I could do it myself I'm good I don't have to go to school to learn how to do hair and what most people don't understand is most cosmetologists did not go to school to learn how to do hair. Most cosmetologists went to school to learn how to do hair the right way and combine it with the science of hair. I did not learn how to braid in cosmetology school. In my opinion, doing hair is like singing. Either you got it or you don't. I don't care how many voice lessons you take. If you can't sing, you're not going to sound like Beyonce. 
And the same thing goes for hair. I don't care how much you go to school. If you don't got it, you just don't got it, right? But when I went to cosmetology school, I went to learn the science because I didn't know the science. I had my skill level from doing hair in my mother's kitchen, right? But I went to school to learn that there are three levels to the hair fab, the cuticle, the cortex, and the medulla. I learned that not everyone had a medulla. I learned that the cortex of the hair shaft is where your melanin lives. And the cortex of the hair shaft is where those sulfur, the sulfur linkages live, disulfide bonds. And the more of those you have, the curlier your hair is. And if you're a person who doesn't really want to have curly hair, you can get a relaxer. And I could slowly remove a small percentage of your disulfide bonds and leave your hair with 70% of its curls because that's what you're supposed to do. Or I learned how to take melanin out of the cortex. And after I take the melanin out of the cortex, I learned how to either replace it with a new artificial pigment or how to tone it. And then I learned how to multiply the bonds that I just took away and rearranged. So that way the hair never breaks. That way the hair stays strong. And then I also gave my clients a step-by-step -step regimen to follow at home so that way their hair never breaks. The only time your hair breaks off when you have color is if you slack on maintenance. Having hair color is an extremely big commitment. And if you cannot commit to shampooing your hair on a regular basis, if you cannot commit to combing your hair on a regular basis, then color is not for you. If you cannot commit to having your wash day be like a ritual for you and something that you do to care for yourself, then it won't. Here on my channel, I try to share the science of hair so that way you guys can put it together on your own by sitting down and watching my videos or not just watching my videos but really learning how to search scientifically how to look up scientific journals right not just reading random blog posts if you want to know exactly how to search on google so that way you're only getting medical journals then check the link in the description box below and watch my last video in full right but you guys i'm so excited to share videos like this with you guys we are going live tonight and tonight we are going to go deep into telogen effluvium and the number one herbal blend that i recommend for you guys to reverse telogen effluvium and for you to decrease your cortisol levels because it is an increase in cortisol levels that cause your hair to break off it caused your scalp and your follicles to become inflamed and tonight we are going to talk about it so make sure you're there and if tonight is past just check the links in the description box below so you can watch this full live let me know in the description box if whether or not you guys want to see the full video video of me cutting all of her hair off because it'll be coming up next i love you guys bye